Welcome to worship on this Lord's Day. And we're glad that you're here. Uh, just a couple quick announcements before, I don't know why I'm coming in and out. A um, couple quick announcements before we continue. Um, first of all, there is no Midwest Food Pantry run this Tuesday. Um, we're going to skip this one, so if you're used to coming and helping unload, um, you've got the afternoon off. And also, Judy, what's the second one? So if you have any excess garden produce, um, the uh, food pantry recipients would love some fresh food. Um, you can just bring it or put it in the uh, refrigerator in the kitchen, and uh, food pantry volunteers will take it from there. Um, as you notice as you came in, um, we're wearing masks again. Um, hopefully the Delta variant will spike and, and go away quickly. But until then, we'll be courteous to our neighbors and, and um, hope that um, we can take the masks off again soon. But until then, we just we thank you for understanding and wearing the mask. We continue with our gathering again, O oh, Day of Rest and Gladness.
provider help, help us. us. It is hard to believe there is enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for the life of the world. Amen. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy. You are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Ever-loving God, your Son gives himself as living bread for the life of the world. Fill us with such a knowledge of his presence that we may be strengthened and sustained by his wisdom life to serve you continually. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Our epistle lesson for today continues with words from the Apostle Paul about how we Christians should live. A reading from Ephesians. Be careful then how you live, not as unwise people, but as wise, making the most of the time, because the days are evil. So do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit, as you sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves, singing and making melody to the Lord in your hearts, giving thanks to God the Father at all times and for everything. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. Then the religious authorities disputed amongst themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? So Jesus said to them, Very truly, I tell you, Unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood have eternal life. And I will rise with them on the last day, for my flesh is true food and my blood is true drink. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which your ancestors ate, and they died. But the one who eats this bread will live forever. The Gospel of the Lord. Would you please pray with me? Dear Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be fitting and good in your sight, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. You must eat of my flesh. You must drink my blood. Hmm. Four times. Four times Jesus says that in this gospel lesson. All right, again. Unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, those who eat my flesh and drink my blood 
For my flesh is to food, and my blood is to drink. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me. You know, I kind of wondered as I prepared this sermon why I chose of all of the Bread of Life services and all of the Bread of Life passages, I thought to myself, Carrie, why did you choose this one to preach on? It's kind of, you know, a little gruesome, if you will. Eat my flesh, drink my blood. It's talk like that, that probably led to the early Christians getting called cannibals and ostracized. I'm just saying, it's not appetizing. Not appetizing at all. And yet there it is. Eat my flesh, drink my blood. Uh, after moving to remote worship for about a year, we, I eventually brought my son back to in-person worship when we resumed the practice uh, here at Trinity Lutheran. He was about two and a half years old when he came back to in-person worship with me. So it had been a while since he had been amongst church people. On the drive home, I asked him about the experience. And I, so I, I said, you know, simple enough questions on the drive. Did you have fun today? Yes, mommy. Did you take communion? Mommy, he said, I didn't see Jesus. Hmm. I thought, well, that's fair. I said, yeah, Jesus can be kind of hard to see in communion. We have to use our imaginations, don't we? Then he says, the guy at the time was totally into like lions and tigers and, and dinosaurs. He said, mommy, I killed Jesus. I ate him up with my teeth. And I thought, ho, oh, oh, ho, oh. ho. What do I do with this? That went really gruesome, really fast. Uh, really violent, really fast. Uh, so as I'm trying to figure out what to say to this, he goes, well, mommy, he came back. I wonder if uh, my two and a half year old had been reading this passage. I ate him up with my teeth. Uh, is that what Jesus is asking of us? To eat him up with our teeth? It's easy to get caught up in this, this gruesome language. But I don't think that that's what Jesus is trying to do. I don't think Jesus' goal here is to gross us all out. He may be uh, trying to draw our attention with some rather shocking language, but he's not trying to gross us out. He's not trying to imply violence and pain in his presence. I think what Jesus is saying in this passage is that I am really truly here with you. I am not just some spiritual apparition. And God's interest in you and in your existence is not purely spiritual. But I and God are about your real, true, tangible, embodied life. We care about you as a person and in particular. Your time and your place. And, and because that, God became incarnate as a real person in a real time and in a real place fully embodied and there's something particular and amazing about that the idea that we can touch and hold on to to cling to that we could taste 
and experience the divine. I think that's what Jesus is getting at here. And if we move past the, the grotesque, the gruesome, we can see the promises that undergird. You will have eternal life. You, you will abide in me and I will abide in you. I will abide in you. When we take communion, well, whenever we eat anything, really, when, when we eat something, when we take it into our body, when we drink something, when we take it into our body, it quite literally becomes part of who we are. I am particularly attuned to this right now for a couple of reasons, because one is because having recently had a child, I noticed changes in my body, some of which I like better than others. And so I notice the way the foods that I eat affect me, but I also talk with my children. I try to find healthy ways to talk to them about how we eat. To say things like, you know, when we eat red foods, that helps our heart. When we eat green foods, that helps our immune system. When we eat meat, that can help us build muscle. When we eat white foods, that gives us energy. The foods that we eat go into our body and helps our body do things. This is why we just don't eat candy all day, I explain. When we eat things, when we drink things, they quite literally come into our body and become part of who we are. And so when we come to this table and experience the true presence of Jesus in the cup and in the bread, and when we eat the bread and we drink the cup, Jesus becomes part of who we truly are. Jesus says, I abide in you. When we come to the table, when we celebrate the Lord's Supper, we find that Jesus is literally becoming, we are literally uh, abiding with Jesus. Jesus is literally abiding within us. We literally are experiencing God within us, becoming part of who we are, becoming part of our physical existence as we move around. We understand that Jesus is truly present with us in this meal. And so when we come to the table, we treat the bread and we treat the cup with a certain deference as sacred and beautiful. But what if after communion, when we looked in the mirror, we treated ourselves as a living embodiment of Jesus as sacred and beautiful? What if, would happen if when we looked in the mirror, we looked closely enough to see one who is made in the image of God and a bearer of the divine into the world? Would we have more love and compassion for ourselves? As we age and change, as our body changes with time, some of those changes we look upon with, with happiness perhaps and some with less. But what if with each one of those changes instead we saw, oh, here is a new expression of God bursting forth in my face. What if... We wrote on that mirror, you are made in the image of God. Might we have more compassion 
for ourselves? Might we treat ourselves with a little more love? Might we see ourselves as, as sacred in creation? Could you have the capacity to treat yourself, to see yourself in such ways? What difference might that make in your life? And moreover, if we understand that each of us is carrying the image of God with us, then when we look upon one another, might we see as well that each of us, that our neighbors, our friends, our neighbors, our church members are also carrying Christ within them. How might we then treat those who sit in the pews next to us? How might different we, we treat those in the grocery store line behind us? When we turn on the news and we see people fleeing from war, how might different we, we view them? When we see people's lives devastated by wildfires, how might we differently view them? When we hear the stories of families devastated by illness and watching their loved ones slip away, if we understood each of those on ventilators as bearing the image of Jesus, of God. How might we differently view them? How might we differently care for our neighbors, our friends, those across our global community differently? If we saw each person as sacredly and beautiful as we do Holy Communion. When I come to this altar, to this table, and I uncover the elements, I do so with tenderness and care. I gently fold the cloths. I remove, I set them down I lovingly pick up the cup. When Holy Communion is over, we gently cover them again with honor and care. How might our world look different if you treated yourself as so sacred? How might our world look different if we saw each among us as someone who is sacred, to be cared for with tenderness and love. May it be so.
the blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us be upon you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Rooted in Christ and sustained by the Spirit, we offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all of creation. God of wisdom, enlighten your church. Guide theologians, biblical scholars, authors, and seminary professors as they seek greater knowledge and invite others into deeper understanding. Teach us to ask faithful questions and open our minds to new ideas. God, in your mercy. God of creation, mend the earth. Cool warming oceans and preserve melting ice caps. Increase our awareness of changing climate patterns and reveal new approaches to the ecological challenges we face. Shield those in the path of hurricanes or tropical storms. God, in your mercy. God of all nations, direct our leaders. Grant them courage to lay aside political grudges and renew their determination to address difficult conflicts. Guide them in the work of reconciliation, God. In your mercy. God of compassion, tend to the wounded. Guard those tormented by mental illness or mired in addiction. Ease the anxiety of those struggling with dementia. Come quickly to help all who are grieving and all who suffer, especially Connie Swanson and Joy Barons. God, in your mercy. God of beauty, inspire artists. Bless those whose visual and musical gifts enliven this assembly, especially Amber. Bless the creative work of poets, hymn writers, composers, painters, sculptors, and others who enrich our worship and daily life. God, in your mercy. God of resurrection, bring us new life. Give us the living bread from heaven through which we abide in your love. And on the last day, rise us up with all the saints to eternal life. God, in your mercy. We lift these and all our prayers to you, O God, confident in the promise of your saving love. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And always with you. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Yes, please stand. Again after supper, he took the cup gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. 
gathered together by the Holy Spirit, we pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ has invited us to this table. You are all welcome to receive, to be, to see the body of Christ. Thank you.